we're making the closed granny square. The closed granny square is a great alternative if you are wanting to make a granny square but do something different than what you've been doing. This is an easy stitch. There's so much versatility that you can do with this and it's really, really pretty. I mean, the, the multiple things that you could do with this stitch would include making different colored squares and then combining them that way. You could change the different rows to be different colors within the same granny square or just keep everything the same color, make it very neutral, very calming and join those squares together too. This stitch, I couldn't decide if I wanted to label it an absolute beginner friendly pattern or an advanced beginner friendly pattern based on placement alone. I mean, all we are really working in this pattern are double crochet stitches and chains. However, when you're an absolute beginner crocheter, I kind of want you to focus on how to make the actual stitch and getting comfortable making actual stitches, not so much placement. However, when I was making this, I, I could absolutely see an absolute beginner crocheter playing with this and getting it and feeling really good about making this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, if you're an absolute beginner crocheter and you wanna give this a try, go for it. If it's feeling a little hard, just know that you might need a little practice. The terminology I'm using for this particular video is US terminology, which means every time I refer to the name of a stitch, it's being referred to in US terms. And when it comes to the dimensions of this square in particular, this is a seven inch by seven inch square. And you can change that however you want. You can add more rows or more rounds to your square and make it as big as you want, or you could take rounds out and make it as small as you want and have fun with that as well. Now, when it comes to this particular pattern, I think any size yarn would work. Even a textured yarn I think would be a lot of fun. So that's what's great about this particular project is you can have fun with whatever yarn you may have in your stash or you think it's pretty and you wanna play with. <laughs> and that's really cool. So I am, in particular, I am working with a size four weight worsted medium Aran 1012 ply or 8WPI sized yarn. Most specifically, I'm working with loops and threads and peckable yarn. I believe this is the color linen, but it doesn't really matter. A uh, crochet hook that I am using is an H8 or five millimeter crochet hook because I love using the size crochet hook with the size four weight yarn. Uh, and the only, only other things that you may find that you need are a pair of scissors, obviously, and a yarn needle or tapestry needle to help you weave in the ends at the end of your project. That's it, that's all we need. And then of course, however many squares you wanna make. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get started making the actual closed granny square. All right, so we are going to start with whatever yarn that you chose for this project and your crochet hook. Starting with a long enough tail for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. Go ahead and create your slip knot. Attach your crochet hook. Now for this particular granny square, we are going to begin by chaining four and then slip stitching to close that ring. So chain one, two, three, four, and then slip stitch into the very first chain. Yarn over, pull through, and then keep pulling through. And that creates a circle or a ring that we are going to work into. For round one, we will begin by chaining three. One, two, three. That chain three does count as our very first double crochet stitch. Next, you're going to make three double crochet stitches inside that circle. One, two, three, chain two, one, two, and then make four double crochet stitches inside that circle. One, two, three, four, chain two, one, two. Make four more double crochet stitches inside that circle. One, two, three, 
four. I now have three different sections. If you count the sections between the chain twos, I have three sections here. Need one more. So chain two and do one more group of four double crochet stitches. One, two, three, four. And then chain two, one, two. Once you have four groups, then we will just slip stitch into the top of the third chain. So find your chains, one, two, three, slip stitch into the top of that third chain to close round one. And this is roughly what you should be looking at right now. Let's go ahead and start round two. And we say round two because we are working around. So we start round two by chaining three. One, two, three. Again, that chain three does count as our first double crochet stitch. And I will say that it will be using the very first stitch space, which would be the same stitch that I just slip stitched into. For this particular round, the pattern will include making one double crochet stitch on top of every double crochet stitch. And in every chain two corner, we will make two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. Let's go ahead and get started working that pattern. So making a double crochet stitch on top of every double crochet stitch, so following that up, double crochet, following that up, double crochet, following this up, double crochet. Great, reached that first chain two corner, make two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. Great, and we just repeat that pattern all the way around for round two. I will go ahead and work a few more stitches with you, but then I will go ahead and meet you at the end of round two where we will close round two and move on to round three. Last corner of round two. Great, and then we close round two by slip stitching into the top or third chain that we started with. And this is roughly what we will be looking at. Great, let's move on to round three. For round three, we start by chaining three. One, two, three, great. Same thing, work one double crochet stitch on top of every double crochet stitch, and in every corner, make two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. Go ahead and work this pattern all the way around for round three, and I'll meet you at the end of round three to show you how it's a little bit different and how we will move on. All right, working that last corner here for round three. Now what you'll notice is that we actually work a couple stitches between the corner and the close. And that is the biggest difference between round two and round three. So we'll work one and we will work two and then close round three by slip stitching into the top of that third chain. Awesome. And that is what we will look at or be looking at at the end of round three. Now for this particular pattern, all you have to do is repeat round three for however many rounds that you want. For me, I went to round five. And a way you can count is just by counting these square sections. So one, two, three, four, and five. Isn't that beautiful? And that's it. 
That's all you have to do to make this pattern. If you liked this pattern, please give it a thumbs up. It's a good reference to me to know if you liked the video. If you haven't yet already, subscribe to my channel. That way you don't miss my upcoming videos. I have another more difficult, complicated granny square coming up and you're not gonna wanna miss out on that video. If you would like more out of my channel or would just like to support my channel in general, check out the membership program. There's a couple different levels there that I think you would really enjoy. If you liked this granny square tutorial, check out my other granny square tutorials right here, just keep it going, have fun watching, or check out this video, which is a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, crocheting with me. I'll see you with the next one, guys. Bye.